Hey there guys, my name's John Campion. Welcome to my movie vlog and I'm here to talk about and review the first season of the brand new Amazon Prime show, the Tick. Now, of course, The Tick is based on the comic book by Bob Edlund, which was then later turned into an animated TV series, which was then later turned into a live action TV series in the early 2000s, which has now been rebooted as another television series on Amazon. You following me? I am still to this day perplexed, amazed, and befuddled why more people have not actually read The Tick comic books. I always tell people when they ask me, what are the funniest comic books ever written? I always give two answers. One is Milk and Cheese, Dairy Gone Bad. If you haven't read Milk and she's read it. And the other is the original run of The Tick. It is just absolutely hilarious. Now, when I first heard that Amazon was going to take a crack at a Tick TV series rebooting the franchise, I got to admit I was a little bit apprehensive. I didn't know that they could recapture that true magic of the comic because it wasn't just funny. It was also pretty smart as a deconstruction of the whole comic book genre. But does that work in 2017 in an era where we've already had The Incredibles, in an era where we've already had Deadpool and we've already had Mystery Men? Can that work today? The other question question mark I had was, I wasn't really comfortable with the casting of Peter Serafinovich. Serafinovich? Serafinovich. Peter Serafinovich. I actually like him a lot as an actor. I loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy as the kind of dick cop. I thought he was great in that. But was Peter the tick? Could he pull off the tick? Could he be the tick the same way we've seen different incarnations of him, both in the comics, the animated series, the old live action series, of course, with Putty Pitt playing the tick? Could he be that? I had my doubts. Well, I finally sat down and watched the six episodes of season one of the tick. And yeah, Peter's now the tick to me. This new tick series on Amazon is not just good it's great. Because is it funny? Yes. That's the first thing I'm looking for when I'm looking at a Tick series. Is it funny? Yes. They absolutely nail that original type of dialogue because Bob Englund's involved in this series as well as he was with the comic books. They have that dialogue of the Tick that every time he speaks, the way he constructs language is absolutely hilarious to me. But it's also a smart series because it feels like to me watching it, Every character, side character, villain, henchman, and side villain feels like each one of them represent an archetype of characters that we see in comic books, comic book TV shows, and comic book movies. And on that level, it's not just funny, it's also pretty damn smart. But the smartest thing I think this TV show incarnation of The Tick does is it makes it so that The Tick is actually not the main character. He's not. The main character of The Tick is actually the character of Arthur, played by Griffin Newman, and he plays him perfectly. They tell the story from Arthur's point of view. It really revolves around him. It's his hero's journey. And the tick is basically kind of like this befuddled, not so bright Obi-Wan Kenobi figure who just happens to be bulletproof at the same time. The tick is there to be the driving force that pushes the story along. But the story is that of Arthur, not the tick. And when the story is told from Arthur's perspective, you get a lot more options that you can go from a narrative point of view. You can see the tick from a different point of view. You can understand the hero's journey idea from a different point of view. And being told from Arthur's point of view and understanding his backstory is actually really rich and I enjoyed it a lot. Another big plus on this thing is in the comics, there was a villain called the Terror and they actually cast the great Jackie Earl Haley to play the Terror. And I thought that if you read the comics, you understand the Terror, that's kind of tough to pull off on live action and on the big screen or our TV screen at any rate and actually make it work. That's going to be tough. He nails it. It. Jackie Earl Haley and the showrunners of the show completely nail the terror. And I thought Haley was both funny and terrifying and just great. Every time he came on the screen, he lit up the screen. I loved him. And that's not often you can say that about the bad guy. The basic setup of the show is this. 15 years ago, the only heroes that the city ever had, the Flag Five, were defeated and murdered by the terror. And when the terror defeated the Flag Five, their ship that fell out of the sky landed on and crushed Arthur's father. And Arthur saw the whole thing when he was just a child. And he comes face to face with the terror as a child. And now he's kind of a mixed up adult as anybody would be if they face that as a child. Now, supposedly over a decade ago, the terror himself was killed in a battle with Earth's greatest hero, Superion, who is an alien being. It's this show's version of Superman, if you will. And for the longest time, people just thought the terror was dead. But Arthur has always believed that he is still alive and has been obsessed and has used his entire 
entire life to try to figure out, track down, and prove that the terror himself is still alive. Now we fast forward to modern day. Arthur, in pursuing the terror, stumbles across the tick. The two form an unlikely partnership, and your show begins. Complicating matters for Arthur is the fact that he has a very loving but protective sister, Dot. Dot is also a character in the comic books and in the animated series as well, and she's played wonderfully by Valerie Curry. I just, I loved her a lot. I thought she was really great in the show. And really, that can be spoken of for a lot of the characters in the show. There is a villain in the show called Ramsey, who's hilarious and great. There's another side anti-hero kind of character called Overkill, and he's great. You've got, of course, the terror. He's great. The tick is great. Arthur's great. Dot's great. I mean, really, from top to bottom, I really enjoyed the interpretation and the manifestation and the portrayal of all the different characters and how they kind of played into one another to increase the humor, but also to be commentary on the different archetypes within the comic book genre today. None of that really matters, though, if the show's not entertaining and the show is entertaining. It's fun, it's funny, and it's smart all at the same time. It's not the greatest superhero show ever made, but as far as a tick incarnation goes, this is absolutely worth watching. But the most important part here is, of course, what did you think of The Tick? Did you have a chance to watch it yet? If not, what's your expectation level been? Are you looking forward to it now that you've heard me blab about it? Jump down to the comments section and let me know your thoughts. Hey, listen, guys, while you're here, why don't you take a second, click on the subscribe button, become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. That'll do it for me for now, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me for this review of The Tick, and until the next video, bye-bye.